Another thing that I saw online that I wanted to comment on, just in terms of, you know, family dynamics and how hard that is to sort of like navigate and how difficult it is to kind of comment on when you're looking from the outside in. So I'm sure most of you guys have seen this story, courtesy of the Los Angeles Times. It says, why would Kobe Bryant's dad auction NBA championship rings Lakers legend gifted to him? So most of you are aware that unfortunately the basketball legend Kobe Bryant passed away a couple of years ago or a few years ago, um, you know, due to tragic circumstances and that helicopter crash that also took the life of his young daughter and a few other people, I think members of the team or somebody that was in helicopter together, everybody in the helicopter obviously perished um, due to, um, if I'm not mistaken, I think they said in the final report that it, it was really, it was a really cloudy day and, you know, the, maybe the pilot shouldn't have gone the direction they went in. Unfortunately, something happened and the, and the helicopter ended up um, crashing and we lost that legend and i guess ever since then i think in general his death has been handled pretty graciously by his family you don't really hear much crazy stuff happening with his in-laws with his direct family with the extended family it seems to be everything seems to be handled with somewhat level of grace this is the first time i've seen some stink around kobe bryant's name and it's to do with his dad or his parents deciding to sell um his nba championship ring and the sad thing about it is that Kobe Bryant is obviously a legend and the fact that his parents are in a position where they have to sell the ring in order to eat, in order to survive, kind of is sad in itself. But then if you kind of, you know, dig a bit deeper and you kind of look into the story, what you'll find out is that Kobe Bryant was estranged from his parents at the time of passing. They did try and reconcile and mend their relationship, but they weren't really on good terms before he passed. And from what I can understand, a lot of it stems from Kobe Bryant marrying Vanessa Bryant, um, his um, widow at the moment, who's kind of handling all these affairs and shit. And Kobe Bryant's parents at the time, when he was um, proposing to her, weren't approving of their relationship. They probably thought she was a bad influence, thought she was maybe a slut, a video vixen, a whore, whatever. They just didn't like her in, in the first place. That obviously caused a rift between Kobe Bryant and his parents. And unfortunately, that rift was never really fully mended before he passed, which then affected the way Kobe Bryant looked after his parents. Now, some people would say you should never let those type of things affect the way you treat your family members, right? Some people should say that. And I would agree with that. I'm somebody that thinks in life you should have it doesn't matter if it's your parents or it's your family or it's your siblings or it's your extended family or it's your friend but there should be one group of people or there should be a group of people who always get the benefit of that with you who could always have a second third 100th one millionth chance with you there's always a road back to forgiveness there's always a road back to how it was before there should always be that person available so that you know how to access that emotion, how to access that feeling and how to kind of be that quote unquote bigger person. Because I think if you can do that with one group of people, you could also be very cutthroat when somebody who isn't in that hallowed circle, who isn't in that very close knit kind of group around you, does some fuck shit to you, you can cut them off immediately because you know what like, because you know what, um, you know what, you know what it means to love somebody without any limit. You know what it means to love somebody to the point where it doesn't matter what they do to you wrong, you're always going to forgive them. You have to have the ability to love that one person like that or a group of people like that so that you can cut off people who fuck you over and whatever it may be, you know, even my inconveniences, you can kind of quickly cut them off because you have, I guess, somewhat of a high level of expectation in terms of what you can tolerate from your family. I don't know. You, I hopefully, you kind of get what I mean. So, if that's that's one side, but there are some people out there that think, especially in the black community, we are way too forgiving to our family and friends. Yeah, which I also do believe, and I think there are some family and friends within the black community that, unfortunately do take advantage of that door always being slightly ajar doesn't matter what they do to you they know deep down you're never going to fully fully cut them off it might take a year it might take two years five years ten years but they know you're always going to come back around and i think those people take advantage of that sort of thing exploit people manipulate people and obviously that isn't great but i would then say as a pushback against that it's a case-by-case -case thing and I think sometimes we also have to be very clear, grown up and adult enough 
and accepting enough to understand that sometimes some people's relationships with their family, with their friends, with their siblings, with their loved ones can sometimes be so toxic, there is no saving it. And sometimes it's best for everybody just to let it be how it be. I think this idea of like trying to mend things, let's get back to how like always trying to like, I won't say force the issue, but make it right can sometimes make things worse. Sometimes if things are the way they are like, like not, it's like, I don't really believe in the whole ghosting thing. I think that's really lame. I think you should always make your intentions clear of what you want. And if you don't want certain things, you should be also clear about, hey, I don't want this thing. I don't want to talk to you anymore. I'm not interested. I think that's very, very important. I think nowadays people are way too pussified. Um, they don't really have courage. They don't really have balls to actually say what they want, say what they don't want, blah, blah. Hence why the whole ghosting thing exists. But part of ghosting that also makes it somewhat beneficial is that it does avoid awkward conversations that don't need to happen because sometimes saying things can make things far worse than you kind of clocking wagwan. Like if somebody decides to ghost you because they're not really interested anymore, it might be actually better for your mental, for your self-esteem, for your, you know, whatever, to just assume that they don't want to talk to you anymore, hence why they're not replying to your texts, as opposed to them actually sitting you down, looking you in the eye and saying, hey, you're fucking ugly, I'm not really that into you, you're not attractive to me, you don't turn me on, I can't see my future in you at all, like, that kind of directness can maybe hurt you more than you actually think it will, because you're thinking you want honesty, you're thinking you want directness, you're thinking you want all that shit, when someone does it, it can kind of throw you off the loop and kind of affect you, you know, for years to come. So maybe sometimes with families and friends and whatnot, it's actually better when things just get left to kind of slowly die. Weird way to say this, but sometimes it is possible that to be the case, especially when you see the amount of toxicity that exists online with some people and their families and stuff, airing out their personal dramas. Some people's families are just beyond reproach. They're beyond saving. And I think there is an inability to accept that reality, especially if you're in a black community, that, hey, some people just don't get on or some people get to a point in life where they don't get on anymore and that's perfectly okay but i feel like the majority of us 99 percent of us myself included probably should be people who have family as that one group of people who can never do wrong by you who you could always forgive who there's always a door open for who whatever, whatever do you know what i mean like, th th that person should also like, always assist you like because i feel like nowadays People are so transactional in their relationships um, and their friendships. There's no real loyalty. Um, you know, all this sort of stuff that exists online. It's all kind of fleeting friendship moments, experiences. It's somewhat important to have a group of people, a person in your life who you're going to be right or die for, right or wrong. You're going to be by their side. Um, they can be by your side, no matter what they do wrong. You can always forgive them, understand them and hear them out, blah, blah, blah. I think that's really, 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 really bloody important. But in this case, it's made more muddy because I guess from what I'm lead to understand, Vanessa Bryant is has basically been left in charge of the entirety of Kobe Bryant's fortune. And... If the parents didn't like Kobe Bryant's wife when before they got married, and she's very aware of that to the point where I don't think they even came to the wedding, which is a big deal for a lot of people, you'd imagine. It's very difficult to not see that be a bit of an issue because maybe Kobe Bryant would have been okay to forgive his parents at one point, but she doesn't know these people. They're Kobe Bryant's parents. They're not her parents. Even though they're her in-laws, they're not really, you know, she doesn't fucking know them. They don't have a relationship. She doesn't really, quote unquote, owe them anything. So that's where it gets a little bit sad and a little bit bad because this person that already has an ax to grind with these people because they don't like her first now has more of an ax to grind because the person that was maybe holding them together or maintaining some semblance of relationship has now gone. It's no longer with us. So now you're in a position where you have all the money, um, you have all the access to all the fucking wealth and shit and you're giving to the parents. I don't know. I feel like if that was me and the parents got into this type of situation, reluctantly, I would help them out so they don't have to sell stuff like this because, you know, Kobe Bryant's legacy, um, you know, is tied to these sort of bits of memorabilia like these NBA championship rings that you would assume 
most basketballers only give to their close family and friends so to sell this sort of stuff just to pay the mortgage just so you can go on holiday just so you can buy groceries just feels like a gross um you know it does it just feels kind of gross kind of sad and obviously it doesn't honor his legacy and it's just unnecessary especially if there's money enough to give you so you don't have to sell this sort of stuff so you can kind of remember him for the good times and every time you see this thing on your on your fucking mantelpiece or in your jewelry box you can think back to him and shit all those things are really important those type of bits of memorabilia maybe there's might be an actual person this might be pretty cool imagine if the person actually buys this decides to kind of just give it back to the family and says hey i love the fact i love kobe um i'm gonna give the ring back to you and then if you guys pass away just give the ring back to me then when you guys go and you're not around anymore but whilst you're still here you can keep a hold of it so you can always remember him do you know what i mean no questions asked that would be fucking awesome or maybe even the wife does it um Vanessa Bryan. but um this just proves that family is just a it's a hard thing to kind of wrangle it's a hard thing to kind of work out and i guess everybody has their way of dealing with these type of things but i just don't know i just don't know what the right answer is let's just read the article here it says, what on earth would prompt Joe, Joe Jellybean Bryan to auction the 2000 NBA championship ring his son Kobe gifted to him? Is the father of the Lakers legend signaling that he and Kobe's mom, Pamela, are in financial straits and need the estimated 200,000 could fetch to make ends meet? And that's the thing that makes it sad. It's not that the ring, you know, it's obviously the ring, the sense of the value of it. It's only, quote unquote, being estimated to be sold for 200,000. So, this is proof that it's not as if they're trying to get millions to kind of, you know, set themselves up for life. They don't have to ask Vanessa Bryant for money anymore. This sounds like they actually need, like, living day-to-day -day money if they're selling it for 200000 especially when you consider their Kobe Bryant's children, sorry, their Kobe Bryant's uh, parents, the level of wealth they've been used to. The fact that they're selling it and it's only estimated for 200000 means that they need that 200000 is an attempt to embarrass Kobe Bryant's widow, Vanessa, into gifting them a slice of the estimated $600 million estate Kobe left her when he died in a helicopter crash. Wow. $600 million. Okay, the wife is being a bit crazy. If the parents hate you, I understand. But you could always write a check, even in anger. Even if you don't like the person, you could always write them a check and say, hey, get fucked, don't talk to me anymore. Here's fucking 10 mil. But come on, man. I understand you're also grieving, but come on. Without question, it's just the latest chapter, sorry, in a choppy relationship Kobe's parents had with their son during his 20-year Lakers career and marriage to Vanessa, whom he met in 1999 and married in 2001. His parents were famously absent at the wedding ceremony in, Dan in Dana Point, the same auction firm Joe and Pamela Bryant used 11 years ago in the aborted attempt to sell the same ring and dozens of other items related to Kobe, put the 2000 championship ring up for sale on March 9th. The initial bid is 33000 and 12 bids later, it's up to 94000 Bidding ends on the 30th of March. The, the 14 carat um, gold ring features... 40 diamonds and includes inscriptions the lakers bryant world champions and bling bling what's it worth in 2019 pamela bryant auctioned a replica 2000 championship ring gifted by her son that sold for 206 so she sold a replica for 206,000, and the real one's gonna go for 300 grand that seems like a bit of an under under valuation though a little bit right um, neither Bryant's parents nor Vanessa were, um, have commented publicly about the story social media fans reaction is mixed so yeah I don't again I don't know what the right solution is um, if the parents legitimately need to eat and you know this ring can allow them to you know have a little bit more runway I guess he's not here anymore anyway it's just a fucking ring it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things it's just more sad for his legacy and for the fact that he left them such or that he left behind such a you know big fucking war chest and empire in terms of wealth and stuff i didn't know he left them that much money in the 600 millions um in terms of i guess the assets and everything else he has and maybe quick lick and then maybe just straight up cash the fact that they have to sell this is a sad thing that's the real, real sad thing about this whole story. Um, hope they work it out. Um, most likely they won't, especially if it's got to this level, because usually in most cases, um, deaths and passings of people in family usually bring people together. Even if people have been on the, you know, on opposite ends of the fucking spectrum and haven't been talking to each other for a long time, sometimes a death can bring everybody together and people let people know, hey, let bygones be bygones. It's not that big of a deal. Things could be far worse. Look at the time we wasted. Da, 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 da. And the fact that that hasn't happened in the wake of Kobe's death is probably proof that these people are real rap enemies. 
like real rap enemy so there's no fixing it zero the fact that they haven't even fixed it now to this point and the fact that no one's come out yet from Vanessa's side trying to like you know I don't know trying to counteract this story and make it look good by saying that she's stepping in to help the fact like the fact that nothing that's happened is proof that they don't talk to each other at all so that's a sad thing about this whole situation because it also means their kids don't have a relationship with their own grandparents and stuff do you know what I mean on their dad's side which is a little bit of a shaky one as well and especially considering how high profile they are but i guess with these situations it kind of is it kind of is what it kind of is